is happening. Hi. Look, man. I can actually smack this motherfucker because he's here with beside. Can't talk as much shit about fried chicken and watermelon scented candles and all that other bullshit. Because you, you ate it you. all. You were sucking on a candle. I had to remind you it was a candle and you, not a you, fucking piece of candy. And now I got to. He smells like Damn. bologna and shit. And I got to sit next oh, to him. Oh, because black people don't eat fried bologna. White you guys folks made smell that. Like bologna and dude, shit, you man. made that shit up. Fried you, bologna is good shit. Exactly. Have you ever had fried no. bologna? No. No, why? Huh? Oh, because you got to mm-hmm. darken it up a little bit, son. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> UFC Fuel TV 7. For anyone right now who's watching the after thing on Fuel, are after. you watching this man with his long ass hair and the pink shirt and the suit doing this? We interview? got it on right here, man. This shit is nuts. Who is this cat? And for any of you guys can answer this question to George because seriously, he was annoying the fucking shit out of me. He's like, oh, Kevin, I swear to God, he just put ice down his balls. He's like, why say, does he do that? No. Don't I, front. I didn't say ice. I said, why did in between round one and two, did they splash cold water on him and Burrell's nuts? Because you know where I would be? Where? Throw some cold water on my nuts, Jordy. I'd have been in the eighth row. I'm done. Cools you down. Probably gets you a little irritated, so you want to punch a motherfucker in the face. Anyway, we're going to start. Oh, Here's the question. Shit. How many of y'all have thrown cold water on your nuts to get up and get ready to do some shit? Uh, not me. Yeah, neither have I. So yeah. therefore, don't. Now, the first fight was a welterweight fight between Matthew Riddle and Che Mills. And Che Mills did not have an answer to this riddle. He really didn't, man. I mean, he just basically... <laughs> I got your job. <laughs> Shit was terrible. Just I know, like man. that fucking Jordan, fight. You know, I'm worried about your jokes lately, man. It's twi- don't do no more Matthew Riddle jokes because the shit is just fucked well, up. Well, hopefully we don't have to watch him attempt the fight no more. Anyway, he did do what he had to do, everybody. And for he all you people him. who are disappointed that there's no more wrestling in the Olympics, just tune into a Matthew Riddle fight. Yeah. I mean, you know, he dismantled Che Mills, which he's a striker, and he controlled the fight. But just I, I thought that Matt you know, Matt Riddle didn't do a lot when he did have control of uh, Che Mills on the ground. And he ended up getting the decision. A split one, though. Now, on to the slobber knocker award of the night. Uh, was a light heavyweight bout between James Tehuna and Ryan Jimmo. Now, if you guys did not catch this shit, George just missed it because he was literally walking in my house. just missed the first round, which obviously was the most exciting round when Jimmo kicked him upside his head. He was like, bip! And he hit him, kicked him so hard, I'm like, it's a wrap. It's over with. And... I'm going to tell you what, that dude's been boxing kangaroos in the fucking outback because he can take a fucking punch. (laughs) I don't know. He fucking, he got fucking walloped on or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Crushed. Jimmo hit him a few more times. And I think when Jimmo could not put him away to some degree, that kind of took his heart a little bit because you throw the kitchen sink and everything else at a motherfucker Uh, and they're still. And the other thing that took away from him was his lungs because Jimmo's lungs tapped out in the first round, even though his body continued on because that man had no gas after that. Nothing. Tahuna hung in there, capitalized on um, Jimmo's lack of conditioning and pulled the fight out in the second and third round and took it over. So. Yeah, he really did. Um, but anyway, that's that, he's he's somebody to look out for in that division. He's up and coming and he's obviously uh, undefeated. Now, Gunnar Nelson fought. Jorge Santiago. And I don't I don't know about other people, but it looked like Gunnar Nelson was a bit arrogant or even cocky. And mm-hmm. but I mean Dana on Twitter said he looked so confident. Right. He had his hands down. He doesn't and I, to me he doesn't have the best head movement in the world. Right, right. But I, I just he outclassed Jorge Santiago. Yeah, I, I, I thought that too. I mean I, I everybody was like like you said, everybody was all talking so much about Gunnar Nelson. So I you know I expected to see something just like spectacular. Yeah. You know, when he did what he had to do, it's taking nothing away from him, but I just expect a little bit more. Now, they, moving on well, to the, the thing I found most interesting is they say Gunner can make 155 easy. Well, why don't he drop? Exactly. Yeah, because let I me think explain to you, Benson Henderson. But I'm, yeah, Benson Henderson and, and nine other cats behind him, man. Yeah, because, I, so maybe he's better off staying in the Walter. At least you got three. Well, I don't know. All these classes are starting to get stacked to shit. Um, speaking of stacked classes, light heavies. Yeah. Um, we had Jimmy Manua versus uh, Cyril Diabate. Who, and uh, Diabate's calf said. Yeah, he lost via Sanka. And my jokes are bad? Come on, guys. You got Give me that. Sanka, you know, decaffeinated. decaffeinated. Now, on, on to what I view as the fight of the night, Cub right. Swanson versus Dustin Poirier. Yeah, you said that shit, right? Dustin Poirier. Yes, yes. Swanson is uh, on a roll, man. Tonight he got his fourth win straight, his fourth straight win. and uh, Fourth win straight. Yeah, I say shit back. Don't want that shit bit. crooked. Yeah. You can't get no crooked wins. <laughs> back win, win. But uh, he got his fourth win in a row. And uh, you know what, man? He's just, it's funny because he was standing up with this guy the whole time. And I'm like, okay, it's 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 fairly even. I mean, Cub Swanson was, you know, he's been a boxing with uh, uh, Timothy, I don't know, somebody. Mind. No. 
Yeah, that that would be bombing. I heard Timothy that cat McVay. drops bombs. He drops big bombs. But uh, but uh, Timothy Bradley, Timothy Bradley, he's been boxing with him, and you could see when he was throwing his punches, he was really letting his air out and putting. You know, it was effective. But it was funny in the third round. He said, "You know what?" They were like, "This is still close." His corner told him, and he took that guy to the ground. And I'm like, man. Cuff Swanson's pretty crafty because he could have done that. I mean, and he controlled him on the ground and he manipulated him and did all kinds of shit that made him look basically like one of those monkeys from Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And, uh, <laughs> and, and he won the fight. Don't fuck me up, Cub. Good win. Now, the main event. What I think, think I think Dominic Cruz is going to have his hands full. I think for Dominic Cruz to come back and have his first fight versus Hennon Burrell, he's going to lose. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because Dominic Cruz has little to no power. He gets in and gets out, but I think Henan Burrell is just as quick as he is and has more power. Now, neither one of these guys has more power than Michael McDonald because right. McDonald, I think, caught Burrell in that first round. He does. And Burrell was like, oh, ow, ow, oh, I don't need to get in that close. And, and he changed his game plan. Right, up. and then just started reading Michael McDonald's tells and just started picking them apart. And, it, yeah, it's it's funny, man. I mean, Burrell made adjustments, and in the fourth round, he turned into a fucking boa constrictor and basically put dude to sleep. I mean, he had to tap out. But... It was funny because the one thing that George and I both liked about him and Burrell was that he wasn't afraid to put his chin out there, man. Mm -mm. I mean, he, he got tapped by McDonald, and you could see McDonald was waiting to throw that right uppercut anytime he left that left out there too long. And, you know, he's like, whatever. Yeah. I'm going to throw punches with this guy. So I got a lot of respect for him. And, I, and like you said, I Because a lot of – I mean, a lot of people don't do that. I mean, right. if they get tagged. They get rocked. They go, oh, they start backing up, and then they just do what they got to do to win the fight from then on out. Burrell got tagged and was like, ah, whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go I'm out on my shield, which was awesome. Yeah, and I think he kept doing that. And then finally in the fourth round, he's like, all right, you know, I'm going to take it to the ground and end it. You know what the best part of this was? Right. The 3,000 Ronda Rousey commercials. No, that's right. It wasn't 3,000, dude. Yeah, it was. No, it was 5,400. We counted. We kept oh. tabs, remember? It, this shit was getting a little ridiculous. Yeah, it's getting a little bit crazy, dude. I am actually can't wait to see we that. We get it. We yeah. get that she's the first female. We get that she was given a belt. We get she's about to fight. We get it. Yeah. Jesus. What's going to happen if for some reason fucking... um. Liz Carmouche just catches her. She's going to go to Metro PCS. That's right, Shorty. Is she going to be a left Twix or a right Twix? Probably a right Twix. Yeah, right Twix are pretty good. Yeah. We're out of here, man.